Did you know that currently there's a process that would potentially reverse aging? Within the next decade, this breakthrough treatment could forever change our lives. In today's video, I'm going to share with you everything we know about aging and how the winner of the 2012 Nobel Prize, Japanese scientist and Harvard geneticist, is on the verge of reversing it. There are three certainties in life, death, taxes, and the fact that people will do everything humanly possible to postpone those inevitabilities, especially the death one. Though that's not surprising, it's been a basic survival instinct for every being living on Earth. However, what good is living for a long time if you're gonna be sick for a big chunk of it? Who wants that? Nobody. And that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about aging. It's not just about extending lifespan, it's about increasing health span and how an expanding health span extends lifespan. But before we get to the breakthrough treatment, let's first differentiate between lifespan versus health span. The first known use of the word lifespan appeared in 1831. At that time, the average global life expectancy was a mere 29 years, 40 if you were lucky enough to be born in the United Kingdom. Through a combination of advancements in medical care, hygiene, food production, and social welfare policy, life expectancy around the globe jumped from 32 to 66 years between 1900 and 2000. In the US, it went from 49 to 76 years. Japan was the true success story with the highest average life expectancy in the known world, 81 years. Now the longest lifespan recorded is Francis Jean Calment, a smoker who had claimed that met Van Gogh was the world's oldest person before passing away in 1997 at age 122. The first known sighting of the term health span, defined as the length of a time that a person is healthy, was in 1931. This was two years deep into the Great Depression when few people were thinking about healthy living and most people were just focused on surviving. By the time HealthSpan made its appearance in the dictionary in 2018, 10,000 Americans were turning 65 each day. The global anti-aging supplement market was approaching $200 billion. The quest to live both longer and healthier had become the preeminent first world preoccupation. Two steps forward, six years back. One of the great advances in the 20th century was a continuous upward climb in life expectancy, which is why it was particularly alarming when years 2014 to 2017, then in 2019 to 2021, due to the pandemic, of course, life expectancy went down. The last time that had happened in America was the four years around World War I. What made the 2014 to 2017 statistic more alarming was that the U.S. wasn't involved in any major ground war like World War I. And don't forget, 2014 to 2017 was also in the middle of an era where health span was exploding across the Western world. Researchers found a decline in American life expectancy came from eight of the top 10 causes of death, things like heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and the flu, along with the rise of opiate crisis and the increase in suicide. Now let's talk about a healthy lifespan and how to extend it. You first must understand this natural rival, aging. What exactly is aging? And why the heck do we have to age? Also, what makes us become all those things we can't imagine becoming when you're young? Old, wrinkled, and weak. For many of us, it's aging's long-standing association with time, which itself is inescapable and gives us the impression that aging is inevitable. Except, there's more to it than just a simple passage of time. Even though it has the word age in it, age isn't really about the number of trips we've taken around the sun. Age is really about the change to our physical condition on the outside and the inside over time. At the National Center for Biotechnology Information, the definition of aging is a time-dependent and progressive decline in functions that ultimately ends in death. Also, the NCBI considers aging to be a cause for a whole assortment of chronic diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. The thing is, the NCBI does not consider aging itself a disease. That little nuance, it turns out, is the front line of the very robust and ongoing debate about the nature of aging, whether we can stop it or even possibly reverse it. Now there are three categories that characterize aging. Number one, primary hallmarks, which are the things that cause damage at the genetic and cellular levels. Things such as telomere attrition, which is when the caps on the end of your chromosomes, the ones that make sure your DNA gets copied properly whenever your cells divide, starts to degrade and shorten. Telomere is like those plastic tips on the end of your shoelaces, but for chromosomes. Number two, antagonistic hallmarks. 
This is what happens when the body forgets to be good at taking in nutrients, usually because the cellular system for storing excess energy goes under fritz. Say your hypothalamus sends out a signal that makes you crave food when your body doesn't need it. It keeps sending a signal until it gets what you think you need, but then obesity sets in and diabetes follows shortly thereafter. That's antagonistic. And then number three, integrated hallmarks. This is what happens when all that damage from the primary hallmarks and all those awful physiological responses from the antagonistic hallmarks start to combining and becoming too much for the body to manage. When you add up all three of these hallmarks, you're getting aging. Pretty much everyone agrees on that. What they disagree on is what can we do about it? Initially, researchers, we'll call them Group A, argue that aging is genetically programmed. Their view is that the accumulation of damaged DNA that happens as telomeres shorten and cells get less good at dividing result in aging, which result in death. Their ultimate proposition is that aging is essentially irreversible because our genome has suffered permanent wear and tear. The best we can do is slow down the aging process through exercise and diet. Her name is Dolly. Seven months old, she may not be the monster imagined in a science fiction fantasy, in 1996, Dolly the sheep was cloned. She was grown from a regular old cell. Dolly's birth and life proved that just about any given adult cell had all the DNA necessary to bring about another animal, which meant that you could reprogram an adult cell nucleus back to an embryonic stage, and that damaged DNA was potentially reversible. This discovery set the stage for a second set of researchers. We'll call them Group B. They argued that even if Dolly hadn't managed to fully discredit the DNA damage theory of aging of the prior research group, their theory still missed the mark because the epigenome, not the genome, is the central player in aging. Now, epigenes regulate gene expression, telling DNA exactly what they will become. When genes lose that guidance, which happens when we age, the genes that are supposed to be turned off, turned on, and vice versa, turmoil ensues. Now, after that, chronic diseases start to appear. The other scientist, Group B, argues that we humans can defeat aging once and for all if we can learn to reset and reprogram our epigenes. So if we can stop those problems with the epigenes from ever beginning, we can forestall the cascade and hence the hallmarks of aging. Is there a difference between biological and chronological aging? It is a great, great honor for me to be selected as one of the laureates of the Nobel Prize. 2012 Nobel Prize winner, Japanese biologist Shinya Yamanaka got to work developing a biological cocktail that could reprogram a cell's epigene back to its original form. Yamanaki first used the induced pluripotent stem cell technique on mice. Astoundingly, a year later, he was able to successfully reset human skin cells to infancy. Believe it or not, discoveries like Yamanaka's cocktail, we now have two ages. One age is what our birth certificate says. We are the number of trips around the sun we've taken. The other is the age that our epigenetic clock says we are, based on our health. In 2011, a UCLA geneticist and biostatistician named Stephen Horvath stumbled on a way to measure aging. Essentially, he was able to take some DNA samples, measure its methylation, which is kind of like a genetic rust that accumulates over time, and run it through a computer. This computer was able to estimate your biological age. For the first time, we were able to see the true impact of epigenes on the aging process. If your biological clock said you were older than your chronological clock, you were aging faster than you should and probably need to make some lifestyle changes. And if it said you were younger, you could stop feeling guilty for lying about your age. Horvath's clock, as it came to be known, was able to show our biological age. The stage was almost set to begin testing whether that clock could be stopped or reset. Harvard geneticist David Sinclair compares an aging clock to a scratch CD. The CD still has the information, it's simply unreadable. And just as scratch CDs can be repaired with a little toothpaste, so too can aging cells. Of course not with toothpaste. To test this theory, Sinclair got his hand on a pair of young mice to scratch the epigenome of just one of them. In a matter of months, the mouse with the scratch epigenome began to show all the aging signs of a middle-aged mouse. Within two or three months, the mouse looked downright sick. By the end of the year, its hair had grayed, it developed wrinkly skin, diabetes, dementia, and osteoporosis. So Sinclair managed to artificially age a mouse. Pretty impressive. But the big question was whether he could prevent aging in the first place. 
Apparently, he had the same thought because he came over epigenon nicotinamide mononucleotide, a molecule that gives a shot in the arm to important stuff like metabolism and cell maintenance. After two months of treatment, the aged mouse experienced a 56 to 80 percent bump in endurance for things like running. After being treated with nicotinamide mononucleotide, the wrinkly mouse could run as fast and significantly longer than its untreated pair. When Sinclair and his team ran the DNA through the Horvath clock, it had effectively de-aged the mouse. The next step was to reverse aging back beyond the chronological age. To do this, he would need Yamanaka's induced pluripotent stem cells. So Sinclair crushed the optic nerves of another mouse. He shook up a nice batch of Yamanaka's biological cocktail and injected into the mouse's damaged eye. The results were amazing. The nerves didn't just wake up, they reset themselves. The mouse could see as well as it could when it was young. The Horvath clock confirmed this to be true. So, where does this leave us? Can we stop aging and even reverse it? Will we ever be able to reset our entire cellular system? Between Sinclair's nicotinamide mononucleotide and Yamanaka's cocktail, it certainly feels like we're headed in that direction. Before we leave, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for our channel, Matter of Facts. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.